The group of nations known as the G7 has reached a key agreement to phase out coal-fired power plants by 2035. Now, this is a major step forward in the overall fight to reduce global greenhouse gas emissions, which, of course, contribute to climate change. There are more than 2,400 coal plants still in operation all around the world. CBS News senior national and environmental correspondent Ben Tracy joins us now to discuss the significance of this. Ben, it sounds like a big deal, but, you know, fact check this for us. Is it enough to hold global warming to the 2.7 degrees Fahrenheit that climate scientists have said we need to stay under? So it's a big deal in the sense that this is the kind of agreement that has eluded the G7 for years, and now they have finally agreed to this and put this 2035 deadline on it. And these G7 countries operate 378 coal-fired power plants uh, in their countries. Most of those are here in the U.S. So certainly this is a step in the right direction, but to answer your question directly, it is not nearly enough to limit warming to that threshold. And that's because, as you mentioned, there are 2,400 coal-fired power plants around the world. So the G7 doing this is a good first step, but it's not going to be enough to limit warming. Scientists say basically every coal-fired power plant would need to be shut down by 2040 for us to reach that goal that is in the Paris Climate Accord. And the reason we're talking about 2.7 degrees is that is the threshold scientists say we can, we can uh, avoid the worst impacts of climate change. And you can't, shut, you can't reach that goal and shut down all of the world's coal plants without including countries like China and India, major contributors to these emissions. How would their participation factor into this? Does this put pressure on them? Yeah, so you just named the two biggest users of coal on the planet, China and India. China has more than a 1,000 coal-fired power plants that are operating currently, and they have 300 that are either planned or under construction. India has several hundred more. So really to address this problem of emissions from coal, you can't do it without these two countries getting on board. The idea here is if the G7 does this, then they could put pressure on the G20, which does include China and India, to follow suit. But let's not forget about the United States. How can it phase out coal-fired power plants? And do you foresee a scenario in which they would actually be banned? Well, so this has already been happening. I mean, coal has been on the decline in the United States for several decades now. It's been replaced largely by natural gas and by renewable energy, such as wind and solar power, because, frankly, those things are just cheaper. So um, this is something the U.S. is kind of already moving in this direction. And the Environmental Protection Agency just released new rules in, the, in recent weeks that limit the emissions from coal-fired power plants. And those standards are so stringent that basically existing and new coal-fired power plants in this country would have to install what is known as carbon capture technology that kind of traps the emissions before they get released into the atmosphere. And if they don't do that, then yes, they would basically have to shut down. So this is the direction the U.S. is already moving in, and certainly this will accelerate that. But, Ben, we have a presidential election coming up. Seems like a coin flip at this point in the last few seconds. Would a second Trump presidency reverse that decision? Well, certainly President Trump, if he's reelected, could say we're not going to abide by this. But really, the federal government does not have a real big thumb to put on the scale to, to reboot coal in this country. As I mentioned, we are moving towards renewables and natural gas, largely because those things, frankly, are just cheaper. Certainly an important story to keep watching. Ben Tracy, thanks for that. Appreciate the update. Thanks, Errol.